In this video, I'll be showing you how you create a new collection with Recollector. I'll be showing you this on the uh, PC version, but I'll also be showing you briefly how you get started doing the same thing on the Macintosh version. What I'll be showing you is how you can create a new collection from a, a wizard that Recollector now includes. It makes the process of getting started with a new collection very easy. You just step through a set of five steps and you're ready to go. On the Windows version, you begin uh, this process from the Recollector control window, which you see up on the screen now. If you happen to already be in Recollector looking at another collection, you don't see the Recollector control window, you can go to the Windows menu and uh, choose Recollector control window from there, and this window will be brought up. So we click Create New Collection, and that gets the process started. Uh, the first we, uh, question that it asks us is whether we're creating a new collection from uh, one of the templates that's built in using the wizard, and that is what we're going to be doing today, or whether you already have data out there on your disk in the form of an Excel spreadsheet or a text file with delimited columns. Uh, you can also create a collection directly from existing data using one of those two methods. But today, we're just going to be creating it using a wizard. So let's click Create Collection, and now the wizard window comes up. Now at this point, I'm going to just interrupt for a second, and I'm going to bring up uh, the Macintosh screen. On the Macintosh version of Recollector, there's no separate Recollector control window. All of the functions of Recollector are accessible through the main menus. So you see at the top here, the Recollector menu, and on the File menu, there is a new collection choice. And if you choose that, you're back at this uh, three-choice window that we saw the equivalent of, and if you choose the first one and click Create Collection, you're now into the wizard. And from here on out, the Mac version and the PC version behave identically. So let's return to the PC version, and let's continue on. So the first screen of the wizard just gives you a little uh, heads up as to what you'll be doing in the five steps of the wizard. But let's click Next and actually begin the process. The first question the wizard asks is, what do you want to name this collection? You can pretty much name it anything you want. I'm going to be showing you creating a collection of typewriters. And so I'm going to call this collection My Typewriters. And that's really all we need. And I'll click Next. And now we're at the point where it's asking us, well, what kind of collection is this? And there are templates for a variety of different kinds of collections. And let's take a look briefly at the drop-down list of template types. And we can look to see, well, where does typewriters best fit in these various categories? And the last one here, machines, that looks like a good possibility. I'll select that, and I can read the description of what this template is intended for. And in fact, uh, right at the end here, it suggests typewriters is one of the things that you might use this template for. So we know this is probably the right choice. By the way, if you have an unusual collection and none of the categories that um, are in that drop-down list seem appropriate, choose the first one. The first one was named Generic. And Generic is a template that can be used with any kind of collection. It provides you with a minimal set of starting fields that almost any collection would use. And in the next step of the, of the wizard, you'll be able to add the additional fields that are appropriate for your particular collection. So let's move on to that next step. All right, now we see a list of fields on the left-hand side of the window. And those fields are the ones that were set up by the particular template that we chose. And you'll see um, with things like um, manufacturer and year of manufacturer and working order that these are kinds of information that are appropriate for uh, machinery kinds of objects. And that's why these fields are there. But in your particular case, you may want to make some modifications to what you see here. And let me show you what are the kinds of modifications are that you can make. Let's uh, take the second field, type. Um, let's say in my case, I really want this to be called, I want a type, but I want to say um, typewriter type, or actually better yet, machine type. Let's call it machine type. So I can type in this modified name and click change. And now it's modified that field so that it has a different name. And you can modify the names of any of these. And you can also modify the data type of a field. 
So, for example, um, let's pick manufacturer. In manufacturer, it has the data type is short text. Well, let's look at the kinds of data types we have available to us. The uh, three first data types are text data types, short, one-line, and multi-line text. These are really all the same kind of thing. They're all just basically for text data, but they vary in their length. And this is reflected in the data entry screens that we'll see uh, later on. When you're doing data entry, you can have the form um, automatically size the data entry box so that it's appropriate for the kind of information you're going to be entering. If you're entering always just a short uh, word or a phrase, you would use short text. Longer uh, text, you might use a one-line text. And very long text, that might be on multiple lines or paragraphs, choose multi-line text. Uh, the other fields, currency, dimension, number, date, those are pretty self-explanatory. The last one is primarily for images, image, audio, and video. You can also put links to audio and video clips in there, but primarily they're used for images. So let's change manufacturer from short text to one-line text. It probably short text would be fine, but just to show you how you can make these kinds of changes. Now, you can also delete any fields that you see here that are things you don't think you would want. For example, here we have a working order, which is intended to be like a yes-no kind of answer, but maybe we don't want that as a separate field, because the very next field, condition, that's where we'll, we'll describe whether or not this particular typewriter is in a working condition. So I'm going to choose that working order field and delete it. It's gone. And finally, you can add new fields, fields that weren't included by the template but that you know you want. Now, I want for my typewriter's collection, I want a field that describes the inking method that the typewriter uses. And so let's add a new field, and let's call that uh, inking method. And I'm going to have that be a short text. The inking method is either pads or ribbons. Those are the two main kinds of inking methods that were used in old type typewriters. So let's add that field. And now, notice there's an inking method field at the bottom of the list. You should not worry about the order in which fields appear in this list. That really has nothing to do with the order in which fields are displayed when you're looking at your collection in Recollector. There are other ways within Recollector of completely controlling the order in which fields are displayed. So we're not going to worry here about what order we see the fields in. But that's all the changes I'm going to make here. One last thing before I move on to the next step of the wizard is I want to mention that the choices you made here do not lock you in. Even after you've started to add data to your collection, you can always go back and make modifications to the set of fields that your collection contains. If you realize that there's a field you forgot to define, but you realize you want it, you can add that at a later time. Or you can get rid of a field that you realize you're not using at all and you don't need. Okay, let's click Next to move on to the next step in the wizard. And here we're being asked, what units are the default units that should be used for currency fields and for dimension fields? And um, in this case, um, I'm going to have my default currency units uh, be dollars, so I'll choose dollars. And I'm going to switch from centimeters to inches for the dimension field. So I have things like the width or the height of the of the uh, typewriters, I want to measure those in inches. The text in this uh, step of the wizard describes how you can override these, override these defaults for particular currency or dimension fields if you want, and it tells you how to do that. But um, if you don't override them, these will, what, uh, will be used and what will be displayed when you're looking at your data. OK, now we're on to the very last step of the wizard. And now it's asking us, what is the name and where should the file be that stores your collection? And it, uh, the program suggests storing the collection in, the, in your Documents folder. And it suggests a name for the collection file based on the collection's name. So it's selecting, uh, suggesting mytypewriters.xml. The .xml reflects that all Recollector collections are stored in XML format. So these files always have an, a file name extension of XML. But you can change the name if you don't want to use this name, and you can change the location. You can click the Browse button there and uh, navigate to some new directory. 
um, if you decide you would like to store your collection in a different place. But let's accept the default here and let's just click Finish. And the wizard is now done. The collection has been created, it's been written out to the disk, and a congratulations window here tells you that this has been done. And it tells you how to actually now begin adding data to your collection. Um, it tells you to choose Add New Records from the Edit menu. It also describes here uh, some of the issues that I mentioned earlier about the ability to make changes at a later time to the set of fields that are in your collection or how to control the order in which fields are displayed. It also mentions that the setup created a new folder, a new directory, to hold the images that are associated with this collection. Recollector suggests that you have a single uh, directory, and it calls it the image directory, to contain images or audio and video clips that are uh, referenced by the records in your collection. You're not required to put all your uh, images into a single directory, but Recollector recommends that you do so. It makes it easier and more reliable when you do things like copy collections, um, back them up, restore them. So um, it's created this uh, directory for us, and so we're ready to go. And now the, the collection is being displayed. There's not much to look at right now other than the headers that show you the various uh, fields because there's no data yet in the collection. Let's uh, add a tiny new record to the uh, collection. We'll assign record number one, and let's say the manufacturer's Remington. I'm not going to fill in the other fields for now. I'm just going to just do this for demonstration purposes. And now you see that the collection now has a record with ID number one, with manufacturer Remington, and the rest of the fields are blank. If we look at the item details for this record, we see just the data that we've put in. But that's really all there is to creating a new collection. It's just stepping through that five-step wizard, and your collection is up and running. I should mention you can repeat this process as many times as you want, because Recollector lets you create as many different collections as you want. Um, and finally, the, I should mention the very first time you install Recollector and begin it running, um, it will suggest that you probably want to create a new collection uh, as the first thing you do and provides an easy way by clicking on a button to jump right into the wizard and to get started. Um, so that's a, that's a quick overview of creating collections in Recollector.